it's time to now time to now focus on the big semiconductor push well the numbers are mind boggling 20 proposals possibility of 7 crore chips per day 1.52 lakh crore is the approved projects worth Three have already broken ground this year. Committed funds is 62,000 crores already. Could go up to 76,000 crores. To talk about all these numbers, put them in perspective amidst the geopolitical climate is exactly what we will be discussing. Pankaj Mahindru joins me along with Ambassador Meera Shankar. Pankaj Mahindru, President of, uh, Chairman in fact of ICEA. Thank you so much, sir, for taking out the time. My first question, sir, these numbers seem to suggest that we may be late on the semiconductor story but we are now more than catching up. Yes, uh, I think India has made incredible progress uh, in a very short time. This was conceptualized only two and a half years back. And uh, the progress is remarkable. And this is happening at a time when the uh, almost the entire democratic world and otherwise is investing in semiconductors in a very big way. Because it is expected that semiconductor uh, demand will shoot up from uh, 550 billion to over a trillion in the next five, six years. Uh, in face of that, India has been able to uh, ground five good proposals. That is uh, quite excellent. It is, it is a, uh, you know, this is something as big as the atomic energy and the space program of India. In fact, in the longer run, this will be, uh, I think, an uh, incredibly useful program for India. And uh, industry is very pleased with the way things have panned out. A very important thing that you said in terms of uh, how significant this could be, maybe as much as our space mission. Uh, Ambassador uh, Meera, I'm going to come to you in just a second, ma'am. But one question I want to ask you, Mr. Mahindru, is that when you look at the ambitions that India has, whether it is in the 28 nanometer or the 40 nanometer, essentially it wants to cover the lower end of the chip cycle, the chip uh, ecosystem. Does that mean it could get there faster? Because because a lot of that technology is now stable it's, and already that's, in that's place. Not a, that's not a fact. That's not a fact. Uh, we, are, we are straddling the entire 360, okay. the supply chain, semiconductor product design where some incredible designs are going to come out. You see, semiconductor industry is not all about fabs and the, you know, the supply chain of the fabs. Uh, a lot of value is embedded in the design. You know, companies like uh, NVIDIA have proven that. So we India is working on design as seriously as the fabs and packing. So packing is what, you know, uh, Malaysia does a lot of packing and Taiwan does a lot of packing. So India, the three proposals uh, are packing proposals. Uh, and uh, in fact, the four proposals are packing proposal and one is the FAB, which is which are getting grounded. The uh, DLI, which is design linked incentive scheme, already 13 uh, companies are participating in that. Yes. And there are uh, a lot of people who are getting supported with free tools. Uh, these uh, startups, and typically these are startups. For example, Arm was a startup right. uh, 30 years back. Uh, these were these companies Absolutely. started as startups. So uh, it's not a fact that we are doing lower uh, technology, et cetera, et cetera. Yes. And by the way, lower technology is also a huge bulk of semiconductors are so-called lower technology. So hmm. we have to break into that also. Ambassador Meera, then let me ask you this, ma'am. This push is happening at a time when there are favorable tailwinds for India when it comes to joining the chip ecosystem. There is now a greater push that China needs to be excluded from the high-end technological uh, breakthroughs as far as chip is concerned. I want to ask you this, in the midst of this favorable geopolitical climate, how big a push will this be? And what do you envisage as the next stages? You know, there's been an India-US tie-up, India-Singapore. How do you envisage this now going from here? Look, I think we've made tremendous progress, as Mr. Mahindru just pointed out. Uh, you know, we already had an ecosystem because we were one of the largest uh, bases for chip design. 
And we are also going to be one of the largest consumer markets for chips because our automobile sector is expanding, our medical devices sector is expanding, our defense and strategic sectors will also need it, the telecom sector will need it. So you're looking at a consumer uh, expansion in India and an ecosystem for design. I think what was missing was the ability to actually manufacture chips here. And there we are seeing a push, uh, you know, for packaging and testing. Uh, proposals have been cleared and one proposal by Tata's for producing fabs in India. Yes. Uh, as far as the US is concerned, I think they've taken the initiative in terms of the initiative on critical and emerging technologies, which the two, uh, you know, the president, President Biden and Prime Minister Modi had agreed yes. upon, and yes. the two NSAs have been steering it. Yes. Now that's looking not only at semiconductors, yes, but at uh, larger you know, technological partnerships. No, well, yes. artificial intelligence, hmm. uh, uh, quantum computing space, advanced telecommunications. Absolutely, absolutely. Green in fact, in fact hold your thought, ma'am. I'm going to come back to that in just a bit and also add in as far as the efforts being made uh, by American allies as well for the larger geopolitical story. But Mr. Mahindru, in terms of numbers, the first phase India says the Indian government had said that $10 billion could be the commitment. They've upped the ante for second phase, which could be $15 billion, indicating that uh, the government understands the potential and more importantly, this could actually convert very soon. So in your opinion, how soon do you see this translating into actual chips being produced? You see, the when this program started, the proposals were not profound uh, because, you know, we were breaking ground uh, in terms of understanding the industry. So now some very serious proposals have started coming in and excellent business plans, uh, technology proposals, and the, and the system of appraisal is very robust and very strong. And uh, so the first 10 billion is getting exhausted, fine. But you see, as the pipeline of proposals is building up, we are sure that you know more money will get deployed. Yes. And uh, this support will continue for the next 10 years because the, the state governments are also very excited about it. Uh, the indirect employment which uh, semiconductor produces and the value which semiconductor produces in every aspect is enormous. So, Indeed, it could start uh, the Indian larger will... manufacturing story that India has been wanting to. Uh, Ambassador... Also, uh... the most important factor, most important factor is that we have walked the talk on manufacturing, electronic manufacturing. Mm. We've gone up 400% in electronic manufacturing in the last eight years. 2100% in mobile phone manufacturing, and we are not resting on that. The target is now to go up another 400% right. in the next uh, five right. or six years. So that's yes. a good 500 billion of uh, electronic manufacturing. That's Absolutely. very, very attractive. Absolutely. That's a okay. very attractive uh, destination. I'll come to that, sir. Yes, Ambassador Veera, which is, you know, uh, when you talk about the tie-up, it is happening at a time when America is also asking some of its allies to ensure that ex they exclude China, whether it's Netherlands, whether it's Japan, there is a larger push that is being made. Uh, in the context of that, how big a beneficiary could India be in terms of getting more investments, in terms of starting this further, in terms of kick-starting this on a faster pace, and also in terms of more tech tie-ups? Look, you know, for the U.S., the strategic competition with China plays out largely in the field of technology, in addition to, of course, the military and economic competition. Um, so uh, this is one thing that uh, the pandemic drove home, that you cannot be reliant on only one source for supply chain because there were shortages. Even today, there have been shortages of semiconductors. And the other is that uh, the U.S. has put in place sanctions against export of uh, sophisticated semiconductor technology uh, and uh, chips to China 
including their allies, yes. uh, if they use U.S. parts, the sanctions cover them and they have to get approval from the U.S. government to be able to export to China. So there is a determined push by the U.S. to diversify yes. sources of supply in critical and emerging technologies and certainly not be, uh, you know, cooperating with what they consider their strategic uh, competitors. And yes. that's a window yes. of opportunity for India. Yes. Uh, we are seeing it kick-started, but I think we have to do as much as we can yes. to benefit from this window because it's a short window. It's a short and window. I'll other... tell you what, I'm, I'm completely out of time, but 10 seconds I want to tell this and our viewers, which is that in 2005 is when I started as journalism, I heard the word fab for the first time. 19 years later, I'm just so delighted that finally we are actually looking at some of these investments materializing sooner than we know. Thank you so much, Ambassador Meera Shankar and Pankaj Mahindru for taking out the time and speaking to me on India Global.